Let's mention we have a breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York City. It happened just a few moments ago, apparently. We have very little information available at this point in time. But on the phone, we do have Jennifer Oberstein, who apparently... In 2001, um, I was working for the NBC affiliate in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, um, which is Channel 12. And um, I was actually off on 9-11 and my schedule was really weird. I went to work at 3 a.m. I got out at 11 a.m. so my sleep schedule was crazy. Well, I and was just waking up for my day. Uh, we normally never um, turn the TV on. We were living in Washington State at the time and that morning something prompted us to turn the television on. I was turning on the news. It was early in the morning and I um, saw the second plane hit. We turned it on and immediately saw the coverage of the Twin Towers. We were just going about our business in journalism class and then all of a sudden my English department chair person came knocking on my door. She came running my door. She's like, this is a journalism class, right? And I said, yeah, it's a journalism class. She said, you have to turn on a TV. And I, and I said, well, we don't have a TV. She said, come to my room. You got to watch this. So. We left our classroom, went to her room, and turned on the TV, and they were talking about this plane that had hit the Twin Towers in New York. My wife at the time came in and she's like, wake up, wake up, something's happening. And I ran into the living room and I saw, you know, the, the footage, the infamous footage of the, of the towers um, and, and watched it and saw them fall. Christina, our youngest, our younger sister, had flown in from Chicago the night before and she ended up sleeping in. She was supposed to be at a meeting at the restaurant called Windows on the World, which is like halfway up the tower. And she was down in the plaza when the second plane hit. But it was for about five or six hours, we didn't know where Christina was. And that was pretty scary. I was really scared. I went out on our porch. I looked outside. I thought we might be invaded. We were kind of frozen, didn't know how to um, feel. It was very unreal. It just didn't seem like this could be happening. We watched as that jet like crashed into the second tower. Everybody in the room was silent and it was really crazy and like, well, what just happened? Like, people still had no idea exactly what was going on. Um, and I remember a student in my class, um, Elijah or Eli, and he said, yeah, it's so weird because my sister's a flight attendant. And we're all like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. Um, so then I got in my car and I had to uh you know, this was after the, both towers had collapsed and I had to um, get to work. And um, my commute from where I lived in Tempe to uh, the station, which was in downtown Phoenix, went right through the flight path of Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix. And, um, you know, every day normally I would see all these planes coming in. You know, there, there'd just be tons of them, you know, landing, taking off, etc. And the skies were just nothing. Um, as I was walking to work, I usually parked up a hill and walked down to the waterfront to my office and everything just seemed still. And I worked, I worked so many hours, like long 12 hour, 13 hour days, little bit of sleep, um, cause they wanted, they didn't know what was going to happen. So they wanted people to be ready for, for anything. Got home that day. And my first grader had um, written a, his own little writing of what happened with two big tall buildings and two airplanes. And he drew a picture of the Twin Towers and airplanes flying into them. So that was, that struck me. When I got to work, I worked for the county. Um, I worked for an elected official at the time. And I pulled into the county offices. This was probably at seven, 15 and there were National Guard had been deployed and there were guys with long guns everywhere and back in the day we didn't see that so much. I was walking out of school um, sixth period that day the last period of the day and I saw Eli sitting in the hallway crying and I'm like Eli what's wrong and I just thought he was really upset by what had happened and he uh, said that he had found out just like five minutes before that like at the end of the school day that his sister was actually a flight attendant on that plane that we saw a crash into the tower. For the first, till about 11 o'clock, there was a lot of conversation about whether we should shut down the government because nobody knew what was going on. Um, and it was really interesting to me because his family then started this movement of peace um, because they said that they didn't want their daughter's death to be used as a justification for war. 
And we made a special trip to the 9-11 spot at that point, <clears throat> which was still a smoldering, smoldering pile of rubble. Like there were workmen still working there, but there was like fires and like, it was just a, a disaster area. Another teacher and I walked in with him um, and we had talked to his parents about going and all of this. And as soon as he walked in, he saw like this makeshift memorial to his sister. And I'll just never forget that time because it was such a powerful moment for him. And like, he just kind of broke down and we broke down. And it was like just this moment of bringing everybody together around this tragedy. But